For centuries, the coastal people of Papua New Guinea have been using the rivers and seas for the livelihood. Gliding smoothly on the surface of the mighty Sipik River is a dugout canoe waiting patiently for fish to come along. The rattling of coconut shells and splashing of water can be heard from a distance. The shark callers are calling. The lugger toys with full sails can be seen on the horizon. Using the trade winds, the annual hill trade is on. A huge cane fishing net is being prepared for a big catch. While on an outrigger canoe sits a fisherman waiting, chanting incantations and singing songs, hoping for an answer from the unseen. While up north flies a kite, kite made out of bamboo frames and coconut frond, and lure made of spider web. This was the form of survival. But there are others who have a different technique. The Papua New Guinea National Titles is one of the world-renowned bill and game fish events. Papua New Guinea is recognized internationally as having some of the last unspoiled big game fish grounds in the world. This year, the annual national titles were held in beautiful Medang. Located on the northern coast of the mainland, the waters around Medang offer deep drop-offs, huge underwater mountains with strong rich currents. It brings the bait fish, it brings the game fish, it brings the billfish, and that brings the fishermen. Well, the Manang Game Fishing Club was uh, founded in about 1972-73. Madang is only a small town, and uh, we've been able to be we've been successful since that time. I've only lived in Madang for about three years, but since I've been here, the club has, has been very successful, and it's a lot of hard work by the committee and everybody else. But it's uh, a family-oriented club. Excellent, excellent. Things have come on really well. Um, we've had enormous sponsor, sponsor support. Uh, we've done a huge amount of development here around the marina. Uh, we've built a dedicated barbecue facility, showers, uh, committee room. We've got, you can see down there, the uh, SP bar, which we'll be doing all our freebies out of every, every day of the tournament. So, I mean, that's important for everybody. Uh, general lighting and I mean the infrastructural work and the support from the Medang Game Fishing Club and the Medang Game Club, uh, Medang Club itself has been enormous so thanks to our sponsors and a lot of damn hard work uh, we're looking good, we're looking good. As day one dawns everybody is getting ready for the first day's fishing. On Spectre and one of the Port Mosby boats Ken Weber and the boys get ready. As rods, reels, lines are checked the crew outlines their detailed plan for success. <laughs> We're after a bear, a bear ass Westpac Wahoo. Westpac travel wahoo. A travel, travel wahoo. Get a travel wahoo. A bear ass one. A white bear ass one. We'll get it too. <laughs> Soon Spectrum arrives at their first destination. The pristine waters along the coast of Madang feature deep drop offs less than 30 feet from shore. With these drop-offs always holding good numbers of Spanish mackerel, barracuda, wahoo and others. The boys opt for light six kilo lines and it's not long before they get a result. A 3.8 kilo mac tuna on six is a good start. Well done, John. Cameras, quick cameras. Let's get a photo. That is a big mac. Huh? That is a big mac. Is it? Yeah. Get it? That's yeah. a record. It's a big mac. You want, a, a record. you want to tag it? Oh, man. But it doesn't take long for a good start to turn bad. Well done. Really? Uh, dropped it. Like. What did you do that for? <laughs> <laughs> While Spectron was busy losing fish, others were busy catching them. Robo and the kids on board Wild Fish are having a ball on two and three kilo light gear. Oh, 
But elsewhere, the real action was just starting. The lay-based satisfaction had put Simon Anderson on a 150-kilo-plus blue marlin. After a good fight, the big fish was finally on board. It was to be the first of three that day. Back on Spectrum, the swell had picked up and the things had quietened down. So on Lynch's advice, it was decided to head back closer to shore and pull out the secret weapon. Female barramundi like this, and I think maybe female marlin may like them too. It's called a dick lure. <laughs> It didn't take long to get results. A harbor full of wahoo, mackerel, and barracuda. Away, you know. Away. 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 At the end of the day, the Spectrum boys had achieved their aim. A bear ass wahoo. Yeah, we were very lucky today. We had uh, we started early and uh, we uh, we ended up landing uh, seven fish and uh, we tagged two and we kept the three marlin and we kept two smaller ones and uh, we uh, also uh, had about uh, eight marlin strikes all day but we only landed the three. Day two saw us on Salt Shaker with Mari Seng, a long time Medang local. It was the sort of overcast day with driving wind and rain that keeps the fishermen and fish at home. Except on this day, nobody told either of them. The skipper's aim today was a marlin or at least a yellowfin. Lines were rigged and set and didn't take long before a double hookup, a yellow fin and a man. Before too long, the 120 kilo blue marlin was alongside. In keeping with the value that tournament and anglers place on maintaining healthy billfish stocks, the big fish is tagged and then assisted on its way. It was a win for both the fishermen and the fish that day. Mari had his yellow fin and his marlin, and the marlin lived to fight another day. Despite the good start, one more yellowfin was all salt shaker saw for the rest of the day. Uh, it wasn't too bad today, uh, we didn't catch a lot of fish. Uh, but we did take one, uh, one mile and run about 120 kilos. 
uh, and landed uh, a couple of yellowfins uh, on 24 kilo line. So uh, you know, that wasn't too bad for, for the first day for us anyway. Meleng had so far proven herself as one of the PNG's best fishing sport with nine marlin strikes, five landed and four tagged on the second day of competition. Day three saw us on Witch Doctor and Talia, which Doctor skipped by Bob Howden was the first to leave the pier. Sailing against a perfect backdrop of full moon in a dawning day gave the fishers a hint of fine weather ahead. Skippering Talia is Medang businessman Brad Middleton. He knows the waters like his very own backyard. On board is Gary, an international angler from Melbourne who is a regular visitor to this beautiful country, especially when it comes to fishing. However, there was a problem. According to the experts, whenever there is a full moon, the chances of catching a marlin is very slim. Right, at the moment we're fishing uh, specifically for marlin. Um, so we've got uh, four lines out, two 24 kilos and one 30, two 37 kilos. Um, 37 kilos, we've got slightly bigger lures, uh, hoping for a bigger fish. The 24 kilo lines, we've put smaller lures, so we're hedging our bets between, say, yellowfin, and uh, smaller marlin with a bit of luck. Um, of course, there's only one angler. I'm only going to run four lines today. Um, conditions look okay. There's a few birds around, a little bit of tuna activity. The marlin feed on the tuna, so whenever there's a, whenever there's a few tuna around, you're always in with a chance. So with a bit of luck, we might we might get something. As expected, the day was fine and arriving at the volcano. No sooner had the lines were put down, there was a strike. Down, down. Okay. That's it. Alright. Okay. Now we will go back. It's going to the left there. See that there, left? Yeah, I got it. I got it. Okay. After a very fast and furious 20 minutes battle, a small but still very active blue marlin was tagged and released. No hash. Oh, I'm bad, yeah. Yeah, no. Oh, On which doctor it was a feast of tagging. very long day and we put in a lot of miles to get uh, just a handful of fish but it was our first day fishing and I'm sure the next six days will be a lot better than what we've had so far. Yeah. We have three international anglers, uh, how was it? 
Yeah, we had three international anglers on today and they really enjoyed themselves. Um, they've been to PNG a number of times and they keep coming back every year because it's the game fishing tournament here is, is so exciting and so interesting and, and so friendly. Which doctor is from Leh? Uh, you travel all the way from Leh to be here? Yes, we arrived on Saturday, 220 miles, with a crew of four and uh, had a trouble-free trip. And we're here for the week and are returning uh, Tuesday next week after Easter. How do you expect which doctor to do uh, over the next few days? Well, last year we went to Raval and did particularly well, and uh, we're very keen to repeat that again when we're in Medang. Any posing threat, like from Talio? Or from... Obviously, the local boats have got all the knowledge, and uh, however, we've got some some secret weapons on board, which we'll try and give them some a bit of a hurry up as well. Is it the one kinner? <laughs> it's the name, Witch Doctor. It was an all-familiar affair on day four at the 26th annual national game fishing titles. The day was overcast as the Rosen team heads out to the fishing grounds. We're heading down to the river, down to the Gogol River and then over the Rye Coast. We're going to catch a big load of fish. We're going to tag today. Except for you on board, maybe we'll bring up a marlin. I've heard you earned the reputation of being good luck on the boat. Arriving at their first destination, the team went into action from the word go. Yeah. Oh, the poor guy was just on his way. The first hookup came within minutes of setting the lines. Thirty minutes later, a double hookup. One was lost, but the other got everyone excited. It was a sail fish. It took almost 55 minutes before the fish was finally tagged. Seeing that the big fish are now biting, the team moved to another game plan, changing to bigger lures. Uh, we're going to have a little bit bigger lure on, mate. Despite the rodent plans for bigger fish, the dolphin fish had other ideas. Only a small one. The bigger fish were around, but so were the sharks. Pretty soon, the big fish were everywhere. All in all, it was a really good day for the Rogen team, having 14 strikes, 11 hookups, 10 tags and one landed, left the two female anglers ecstatic. First time experience for me, great fun, 55 minutes of bedlam on the boat, but excellent fun, it's good to see it tagged and put back though, there for another fisherman or maybe our team tomorrow. Keith Kingston, owner of Keke Kingston and lay based boat Tsunami, had engine problems in the morning of day five. And this is a uh, fuel uh, shut-off solenoid switch, and obviously there's a, uh, a fault developed in it. Um, very fortunately, uh, it's not an uncommon problem on this type of engine, and uh, we happen to have two or three spares on board. So uh, we've uh, just simply replaced the solenoid, and uh, the engine started, and we're just about to get underway again. On board is Robo, an international from Cairns, Australia, who is also a professional skipper. Brian and Angler from the Lihiro Game Fishing Club, Jerry the Decky and Kathy all the way from Paris. It was truly an international team and hopes were very high. Fishing with us last year uh, in Raval on the uh, Mazda Marlin shootout day and uh, he managed to hook himself a 700 pound uh, plus blue marlin uh, which we caught for one and three quarter hours. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, we broke the 650-pound leader off uh, trying to uh, turn the fish. Um, 
we had it at the back of the boat for over half an hour and uh, we had the wind on leader on the reel about four times so uh, we're trying to make up with uh, this easter and see if we can uh, actually get a decent uh, decent fish on board this time the location was at Bagabad. There were no bird activity, however, according to the sounder, there were patches of bait. There some not baiting, not up on the, not up on the top. Pick them up on the sounder, and depending on the, the, the shape or the size of the school, or you can sometimes tell that uh, if there's anything feeding on them, because they will tend to bunch up tightly. Uh, each of the uh, each of the anglers got a uh, carton of uh, chopper chop aqua pop uh, lollipops. And uh, on the head of them, they've got a different type of uh, little rubber animal. So we decided uh, we'd create a range of, uh, of secret weapons. And uh, we've done some modifications to our lures. And, uh, this is one of, uh, one of two that we've modified so far, which is a, a, normal, uh, a normal lure to which we've fitted the, uh, the chopper chop. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. I, can't tell whether it's uh, the head of a dragon or a lizard or what, but uh, there we go. This is our new secret weapon for, uh, for catching sailfish. Mind you, it hasn't caught anything yet, but there's still hope that it'll, uh, it'll get us to fish in the next day or two. Fishing around Bagabag wasn't fruitful, so the team made the decision to go fish around the volcano. What they found was a sea full of mac tuna. Tagging was made their aim as the big fish weren't biting. Boys on the board. So far there has been a harvest of tagged mac tuna but no big fish strikes. The team then made plans to use baits. Uh, we're going to try a, a skipping tuna, one of the tunas that, that we just caught. It's, it's tied to the nose. And we put him out on the skip as a skipping bait so he skips along the surface like a big lure, a bit of fish obviously. And what happens when a marlin hits it, it pulls it out of the clip and with the line of drop back it's dead in the water so the marlin then tends to swallow but as he swallows it with a hook like that, they swallow head first. Yeah. They swallow tail first. Ah, that's right. This folds down, goes in without him feeling the hook. Gives him time to swallow the bait. And then when it comes tight, we're going to move the bait forward and it'll straighten the hook out of him and hopefully hooks him up deep in the, in the bad parts. Yeah. Yeah. And the guts and it's a bit easier to catch bigger fish on small line like that. Yeah. Mind you, I don't like killing fish. <laughs> but that's beside the point. The plan worked, but the marlin didn't swallow the bait. The Climax, the PNG Motors Billfish Shootout Competition. The first two days had seen large number of billfish caught. On the third day, there was a dramatic drop in the number caught due to the full moon. Day four and five were relatively quiet. On the morning of the PNG Motors billfish shootout competition, it is anybody's game. The day threatened with more rain as dark clouds hung low from last night's rain. Anglers and skippers alike worried if the day is going to be fine or not. On Talio, Brett Middleton and Jen Boyd are putting final touches on their preparation. Other boats nervously slipped out of the marina, the crew and anglers with mixed feelings contemplating what's in store for them in the day ahead. Is Lady Luck on their side, or will it be experience and local knowledge? Some are out there to have fun. The sea light brown from the rain last night as the 18 boats head for the starting line. 
The start of the PNG Motors Billfish Shootout is always spectacular. Off goes the flare and the race is on. After a lightning start, things are very slow. The Talio team heads out to the volcano, which as always looks very healthy with plenty activity. It is now around 1 p.m. and the team Talio is still waiting. And as if things weren't disappointing enough, just 20 meters away from them, Tsunami gets a strike. Finally, live bait was caught, rigged and set, and the waiting was on again. Bait was checked and checked again, but this time Seven pounds is all you got to play with. So give when you feel like it, when he settles down, give him some. You don't want to die wondering. After a fast surface fight, the fish went deep and was determined to stay there. Meanwhile, back at the marina, Manex Masters and the rest of the Zuka team arrived with a prized catch, a 172-kilogram blue marlin on 24. Having bad luck yesterday, Tsunami bagged a 126-kilo blue marlin through Angler Colin Vale on 24-kilo line. On Talio, the fight is over, a 136-kilo blue marlin. But the day belongs to Manex Masters from the Alatau Game Fishing Club fishing on Chris Carter's Zuka, begging the prize money of over 15,000 kina. Well, really, yes, uh, we're trying to catch the big one today, but uh, this is what we uh, landed today anyway. We tried very hard to go all the time to So, take us to the catch. How did we go? Well, apparently, really, it's a fluke. 
Well, we had to Mai Mai, we had a double track at Mai Mai, we landed to Mai Mai, and uh, there was a green lure on the boat, so we run that one out, and at the same time, the, the, the uh, marlin took that lure. Runner up was Dan Vujic, a 136-kilo blue marlin on 37. Coming third was Steve Fanning, a 128-kilo on 24. Having bad luck yesterday, Tsunami bagged a 126-kilo blue marlin through Angler Colin Vale on 24-kilo line. All in all, it was a good day in the PNG Motors Billfish shootout. Day 7 saw the Nemadawa team heading out to fish around the Bagabag area. On board is first-time skipper Carl, Homer and Gary the decky for the day. Little did he know he was set for the driving lesson of a lifetime. The aim that day is to tag. Lines from 15 to 24 kilo line with baits and lures were soon rigged and set. First hookup was a small yeah, barracuda Gary, on 15. About, oh, I don't know, two kilos I suppose it won't weigh on 15. He's quite healthy, lucky fish. He's been chewed on before, he's missing his gill plate there, he's been hit before by a larger fish and he's lost part of his gill plate. But he's still alive and he's still okay. Bye. Half an hour later, a blue spot to Valley hooked As up. As Rex Hutt would do. Oh, oh, leave, leave, leave it there, leave it, do it again, please. Oh, I don't know how he does that. <laughs> Meanwhile, our cameraman on board the Haley New Guinea chopper got word of a billfish hookup nearby, but got there just as the boys on TP managed to land the blue marlin. Rain started to fall heavy. Maybe, maybe he's wearing it up there. <laughs> Homer decided to change tactics as the rain stopped. Sensing Marlin nearby, the team changed lines to two 24s and a 37. Now, the plan worked, a billfish hookup. Straighten up, hurry up Gary. Run it on the fish, onto the fish, onto the fish, drive up. Slow circle, that's too tight. It was Carl's Three first time driving a boat, especially on a billfish hookup, and his lesson fish. begins. Driver onto the fish, you're gonna acknowledge that driver. Yes or no? You hear it? Yes, thank you. Go again, go more. Go, go down. I don't want it underneath us. Do you understand that? I don't want it underneath us. You can sit back under the boat with lose the lot. Go, 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 go. After a good 25 to 30 minutes of stand-up time, the fish was brought alongside. Homer takes great care and pride in the successful releasing of the bill fish. See that? See how he's biting my hand? That's a good sign. Oh, he's biting me well. See that? Slow down, Rebs. Slow down. Uh, right hand circle. Right hand circle. That's better. up. Now the fish is biting my hand, which is a good sign, but he's not staying upright, which is not a great sign. Unfortunately, the way that he's hooked and played, it's drowned him a bit. If we're lucky, he'll come good. If we're lucky, he'll come good. What happens with this sort of long fight, or like a, a bad hookup like that, the fish develops lactic acid in its muscle tissue the same way that humans do. The lactic acid generates that burning sensation, like when you go for a run. Kick it right! Right hand circle! No, he's not standing up, but he is biting my hand, and that's good. See? Come on, baby. That's better. Now, you see how he's upright? See how the dorsal's kicking up? When his dorsal comes alive like that, and he kicks up, and he gets upright, that's good. <laughs> that looks so good. Don't roll over me, darling. Come on, baby. Come on. That's a better sign. He's actually upright now, staying on his, upright on his own. Carl, get you under my ass, I'm bloody, my legs are yeah. f***ing. Sorry, beep on the camera. That's good. Just so I can relax. Yeah. My legs are killing me. What's Gary asking? Can't hear what he's saying. Carl, yeah. translate. Oh, which way to go? Yeah, yeah. Everyone else, just go around in circles. Yeah, Again, everyone else, go around in circles. Now, this fish is coming good because I can feel his dorsal standing up and 
he's mouthing a bit. Oh, come on, darling. Come on, now, get up. Come on. He's feeling okay. Still not right to let go yet. The danger, of course, if you let him go in this condition, a shark could not knock him over. Ouch! Well, we're going to let him go and see what happens. Come on, go. Well, I mean, I'll get better. I'll give you a kiss. There was another marlin strike, but on 10 kg, the team never had a chance. Just had what we don't want to happen. We've got a live boat sitting in the back of the boat on 10 kilo, and I said, be careful if fish doesn't grab it. And the marlin just come straight past the boat and swallowed the boat. I've taken the run out of Carl's hands, which made it a dead fish up. Despite the rain and the inexperience of the skipper, who today learned a lot about driving, it was a good day for the Namadawa team. Six strikes, six hookups, and four tags. The next day saw 120 anglers on the water. The billfish has picked up again, and that saw 14 boats alone fishing around the volcano. Salt Shaker is one of them. Skipper Mari Tsang is hoping for a big day as well, as well as the rest of the crew. There's heaps of them there too. Well, we're hoping to uh, get a couple of more marlin, maybe tag them, depending on the size. But uh, yeah, hopefully uh, they're, they're still around. Expect to catch any fish today? I hope so. What do you want to catch? What are you gonna catch? Uh, I don't know. Whatever fish comes around, I guess. No marlin? No marlin? I don't know, maybe. Black one, black one I think. Black one, I like yeah. black better. Oh, okay. So, Jerry? Yeah. Mate? What oh, are you yeah. expecting today? I mean, fish. I mean, not. Who knows? We'll like to see. But as the saying goes, Lady Luck comes to you once in a while. All six lines of 215s, 224s and 237s had lures. The waiting and no action made the crew change tactics to live baits. Even though they didn't catch a big fish that day, I'm sure everyone on Salt Shaker really enjoyed themselves. Endeavor was again on fire with two billfish hookups. The final day of the tournament was quiet as boats headed out up and down the coast to try for that one last big catch. There were dolphins and pilot whales but no marlin. On Spectrum, however, it was the kids doing all the work. Young Desmond Swanson hooked into a very nice sail fish. Yes, hello, mate. Yes. 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 After a good 15 minutes fight, Junior landed his fish, a 25.5 kg sailing. Oh, you fell, hooked him. Yeah, fell. I'll bring him in now. Bring him in. Come on. Up, 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 up. Oh, mate. 
Yeah, beauty. Come on, love your fish, Nick. Hey, that's it. Good on you, buddy. Good on you, mate. Come on, you don't fucking wake me up. I'm really fishing. <laughs> we get this gap in here, wait before we go anywhere, mate. Just hang on a sec. On Rogen, a nice 4.5 kg queenfish on six was the only catch to brighten the day. Back on Spectron, young Desmond was still going. A Trevelli and two narrow barred mackerel. The day did turn around and at its end saw seven billfish, two sailies and five blue mullet. Chris Cutter on Zuka taking two. Come the climax of the 2001 Mobile Shimano 26th Game Fishing National Titles. The presentation night, held in the Sana Room at the Medan Resort Hotel, families, anglers, boat owners, sponsors came together. Fishing an ultralight class was Robinson Kids who took out most of the hours that night in the champion team in ultralight. The heaviest yellowfin tuna went to Karen Ritchie, 32.5 kg on boat Cat Baloo on line 15. Champion boat tagging was Talio. Champion team Suzuka taking it out on the heavy tackle class with 1,350 points. Champion boat and champion visiting boat was Endeavor who really picked up the last two days with five bill fish. Simon Anderson caught the heaviest blue marlin at 152 kilogram on 37. Champion anglers are on heavy class Chris Carter on 1,350 points. On light was Rosemary Sweet Apple with 1,000 points. On medium was Liz Final with 810 points. And the champion angler on ultralight was Jesse Robinson with 903.74 points. On light tackle was Pescado on 1703.75 points. And on medium tackle, Mac Attack on 720 points. Dine Cross and Rosemary Sweet Apple each landed their 40 kilogram sailfish on lines 10 and 6 respectively. Meanwhile, pending national records are Rosemary Sweet Apple catching a 40 kilogram sailfish on line 6 and pending world record to Lincoln Smith landing a 17.55 kilogram giant trevally on line 10 fishing on boat Backlash. Special thank you to Ian Middleton, the tournament director, Gary Dunlop, the president of the Medan Game Fishing Club, and the committee for a tireless effort in staging the successful annual game fishing title here in Deng. Yeah, no, it's just officially finished, and yeah, I'm very happy it's over, I can tell you. Uh, like you say, not much sleep, but yeah, I think everybody's really happy. The comments and the general atmosphere here is unreal. We're here at the, what they call Crying Tower, but we've called it the Crying Pillow this year. There's been a few sad stories and we thought towels was not enough, so we've given everybody pillows for all their hard luck stories and the boys have told a few jokes and had a few more free beers and a bit of food. And yeah, no, It's been a really good wind down to what's been an absolutely awesome 10 days. I mean, it's just been great. It's been yeah. really, really good. Yeah. Well, I think it's been very successful. It's been a lot of hard work, but uh, our main aim was to make sure that everybody had come to Medang had a good time. I haven't heard any complaints, I don't think there have been any complaints and I'm sure if you have a look around everybody's enjoying themselves and having a great time. Well it's been a great competition really, the, um, I arrived here on Saturday uh, a week ago and uh, came down in the afternoon and there were I think four marlin had already been captured and three or four more tagged and that was a pretty good start for the competition really uh, and all during the comp uh, as the week developed and boats came in from Lay. Uh, shipped in and driven in. I think we ended up with 18 boats in there actually. Uh, and more fish were caught. It just grew into a great comp. And as you can see behind us here now, the guys are doing the, the crying pillow session and all having a good time and telling tales about what went right and wrong. But some magnificent fish caught. It was an excellent tournament. Everyone had a good time. There were success stories and crying pillow stories. But the best thing is the spirit of sportsmanship, mateship, and the spirit of fishing was carried out throughout the 10 days of the tournament.
Until next day in Lay. Tight lines, everyone.